Welcome back to Introduction to iOS Application Development at SSFS. There are often times when you're writing programs when you have a variable or a constant that may not contain any data. Either it has the wrong value, you looked up the wrong information, and nothing came back from a search. So if you have variables like that and you try to do something with them, your app will crash. And the last thing you want is for your app to crash on your user. So Swift has implemented a way called optionals that let you deal with variables that may not have a value. So let's take a quick look at that. So I have here at the top a simple struct to mimic a student. And I have a first name, middle name, and last name variable, and they're all strings. Well, as we know, there may be people that don't have middle names. But if I go ahead and try to create a student, so I'll do var student one, equals student. If I have a property, I am required to put in some sort of value at initial, at, when I initialize it. So I could have the first name Ariana. I don't know the middle name, so I could just put in a blank string. And the last name Grande. So this middle name is a blank string, and that technically could work, but that doesn't feel right because that's still a value when she may not have a real name. I'm sure she does, I'm just not sure what it is right now. So we're just gonna assume that she doesn't for the sake of this example. So that doesn't feel right. So if I print uh, student one dot middle name, I'm not gonna get an error, but I'm not gonna get any value either. And again, that, that doesn't feel right. Well, a better way to do it would be if she, if she doesn't have a middle name to put the value as nil. Nil means the absence of a value and that would technically be more correct. However, I'm getting this error that says nil is not compatible with expected argument type string. What I could do up in the struct is make middle name an optional, which means it, it can have a nil value. And to do that, I just add a question mark to the end and my error goes away. So my middle name is what is called a string optional, and optionals always have to have some sort of type. If I want, I can actually make all these optionals just to be a little safer in case I don't give one value. And then I can use optional binding to, which you've kind of seen before in the dictionaries, you saw that as if let, I can do this optional binding so if let name equals student one dot first name, I can print name. Now let's see what happens here. Let me go ahead and run it. I'm sorry, I got this manual run. And I see that it is, it prints Ariana. And if I do last name, it should print Grande. And if I do middle name, then we know there is no middle name. So if I just said print middle name, I'd get I'd get an error. But if I do the if let or optional binding, I get nothing. But it doesn't crash and I get no errors. It's still running. So this is a great way to check to make sure something has a value before you do anything with it. Optionals can also be used as return types in functions. So if we look at this area down here, I have a function that is going to get stock information for a particular symbol. So it gets passed a stock symbol. I'm going to assume there's some code here that's going to fetch information about that symbol and then return the price. I have manually set it here. Um, because we don't want to write a whole stock searching function for the purpose of this example. So then I'm going to let the stock price equal whatever is returned back from this function when I pass it the symbol apple. So we know that this is a valid stock symbol, so we could assume this function would work, and it would return 186.93. So if I print that, I get 186.93. But let's say that as a user, I actually type in the wrong, so I do a typo, and I get the wrong symbol. This is gonna fail. So if I just did this, this would crash and my program would crash, my app would crash, which would be bad. 
I have to be able to account for the fact that this might not be a valid symbol. So I could do that in my function, but another way to do it would be to make the return type an optional, an optional double, and then I could return nil if for some reason this was not a valid symbol. And again, this isn't a very accurate function. We would have code that would check to make sure it was valid and return nil if it wasn't. Printing nil isn't very helpful to a user, so I should again use optional binding to make sure that it is a, a, a good value. So I can say if let price equal stock price, I can print the price. Now if I go to run it, I get nothing because stock price was nil. If I return the current price, if I'm returning a legitimate value, now it prints the price. But again, it doesn't print anything if it's nil due to optional binding. So it's a great tool. Okay, the last thing we're gonna talk about in terms of optionals is something called a failable initializer. And there are times when you might not even wanna create an instance of an object if it's gonna give you an improper value. So I'm gonna make a quick struct here. And I'm gonna make a struct that represents an appointment. An appointment, I'm gonna make a very simple one. It might have a, a day of the week. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna make that an int since it's going to be, I'll just say it's one through seven for the days of the week. And I will have another property title, which will be a string. And so I could make an appointment like um, let new appointment, let's do IPT, equal appointment. And the day of the week could be one, and the title could be a big eating. And then I could print new appointment dot title. So that's a pretty simple struct that you've, you've seen that before. What would happen if I gave it a day of the week that was outside of that range that I want? So let's say I gave it a day nine. Well, that doesn't make any sense. I want it between one and seven. Well, I can actually create an initializer that is a optional. So I can do it, an initializer, and then I can do day of the week, this is an int, and title, which is a string. And then in my initializer, I can make sure that if day of the week is less than one, or day of the week is greater than seven, return nil, which means do not create an instance of this uh, appointment. Let me back up a little bit. Else, so if it is valid, I can say self dot day of the week equals day of the week and self dot title equals title. So I can initialize those values. So you see I'm getting a value of optional type appointment must be unwrapped. Because new appointment is an optional, I have to unwrap it. And the way you unwrap something is you use the exclamation point. It's called force unwrapping. So if I click the exclamation point there, the error goes away. And if I print it, I get the big meeting. But here's the danger. If I use this exclamation point and I get an improper value, so let me just set this to nine. And I run that. Remember nine is outside of this range, so it should return nil. I get a fatal error because I'm unwrapping a nil value, which I should not do. So just putting an exclamation point is very dangerous if you're not 100% sure that it's gonna contain a value. A better way to do that is with 
optional binding. So I can say um, if let, and if let is also the, always the way you start optional binding. Uh, I'll say appointment equals new appointment print appointment dot title. So now if I try to print that, I get nothing except for this stuff from up here. So it's not printing anything. If I set this back to a valid date, it prints the title. And again, these are called failable initializers, where I have my initializer as an optional. If I don't give it the proper values, it returns a nil object. So again, these are great ways to ensure that you're getting valid data. So that's a very brief introduction to optionals. They are great if you use correctly in helping your app not to crash and are a great benefit to the end user. In the next video, we'll take a look at segues and navigation controllers, which are a way to navigate from one screen in your app to the next.